What do taking the escalator and playing poker have in common? Other than, of course, that you can do both in a casino. If you're anything like me, you sometimes get uncomfortable during big poker hands. Now, that was true of me early in my career, and to a lesser extent, it's still true today, 20 years in. Today, I want to talk to you about using that discomfort to your advantage at the poker table and away from it. Let's dive in. Let's start with a story. During the couple of years that I lived in Vancouver, I would start each day with a long walk, 30 to 60 minutes around the city. During my walk, I'd stop at one of the many Starbucks and order the same thing, iced coffee, black. Now, in the United States, that means the same thing at every single Starbucks. But in Vancouver, at least in 2011, 2012, 2013, it, it didn't seem to. Half the time, I would get it as I wanted it. The other half the time, it would come sweetened. I started to say, iced coffee, black, unsweetened, which mysteriously only dropped it to about one in three times. To get their attention and to get them to fix it is just not fun. So I developed a foolproof system. I would get my order, uh, I would taste it. If it was bad, I would thank them, walk out the door, drop it in the nearest trash can and walk to the next Starbucks. I could afford it. I was gonna be continuing to walk anyway and you know, doing my part to support multinational corporations. Now, was I scared to go back and correct them? No, not really. Was I saving time by going to another store? No, I had to wait in line again. There wasn't really a strong reason that I shouldn't just flag somebody down, get their attention, tell them they got the order wrong, and uh, wait for my replacement. It was simply more comfortable not to. And as humans, we often opt for the more comfortable path. You know, taking the stairs is healthier than standing on the escalator. Most of us want to be healthier. We're willing and able to take the stairs. It doesn't cause us any pain. Yet, how often do we ride the escalator anyway? Now let's carry this over to the poker table. We know that fear keeps people from making big bluffs or calling down light. We know that excitement leads people to make big gambles, whether it's a big bluff or calling it all in in a spot where they maybe shouldn't. Um, but what we don't talk a lot about is comfort. And I believe comfort especially among competent players, leads to far more mistakes than excitement or fear. We know not to rip our stack in with a terrible hand. We know that we need to bluff with certain types of hand categories. And so we push ourselves to do those things, even in the face of a little bit of fear, even in the face of a little bit of excitement that might make us want to do something else. But comfort is really sneaky, just in the same way that we take the escalator without really thinking twice about it. We often make comfortable plays that are just a little bit easier than the alternative. Uh, and we convince ourselves that it's a good decision. For that reason, I think comfort is literally the number one lead creator amongst the emotions that we have. So when does discomfort show up? You know, maybe we have a hand that we should bluff shove the river with, and we kind of know we should, and we're not quite afraid, but it's just a little bit easier to take the more comfortable route in checking. The plays are close enough that we can justify it. If that's scary to you, bluff shoving the river, regardless of how clear of a play it is, and regardless of how practiced you are, then what about a smaller pot? There is a threshold at which it's not really fear holding you back, it's just discomfort, or rather, it's comfort pushing you towards an alternate line. For some people, bluffs are entirely comfortable, um, and maybe for them it's something else that makes them uncomfortable. So for example, maybe it's facing a big bet on a draw-heavy board with a strong hand and just calling, which would be the GTO play. A lot of times these players will shove the turn rather than call, not having to worry about any scary river cards, torching EV in the process, you know, not keeping in their opponent's bluffs that could then bluff river, potentially making their opponents fold some thin value hands that were gonna value jam river or check call river. There are a lot of different ways that discomfort could show up in your game. Maybe for you, it's checking back the turn with a weak top pair that's not really good enough to go for value uh, and should be checked back, but then you're gonna face some bets on scary rivers and not know what to do. So for some people, it's, it's easier to just fire that turn bet if you get called and you lose, you know, so what? You don't have to face any tough decisions. Maybe it's raising flops to find out where you're at and protect your hand. There are so many ways that comfort shows up and creeps into our poker strategy. And the big problem with comfort is that for each of us individually, it's often gonna show up in the same ways. And that's gonna make us have tendencies that are really strong in spots where we're facing a flop c-bet or spots where we are betting or checking back the turn or spots where we're facing a big turn bet on a draw heavy board. We're gonna develop patterns and these patterns are opportunities for our opponents to exploit us. If you've watched enough of my videos or you've been subscribed to get my weekly poker tips, philgalfon.com, you know that this means two things. Thing number one, this is an opportunity for you to improve your game. It's an opportunity for you to find the areas that make you uncomfortable and cause you to have leaks and correct them. 
And thing number two, which is the fun one, it's an opportunity for you to find leaks in your opponent's games based on discomfort that you can then exploit and make more money. And my advice for doing both things one and two, start the same way. That place is self-awareness, one of the most valuable attributes a poker player can have. How do you become more self-aware? Well, you be more aware of yourself. This means paying attention to your thoughts and feelings. It means looking inward and reflecting. Ask yourself what makes you uncomfortable at the poker table and start to pay attention to it while you play. Or better yet, ask yourself what feels really comfortable? What plays are easy for you to make? What plays do you feel no resistance towards making? Probably the opposite of those are the ones that cause discomfort for you. And if you really want to improve, take it further. Pay attention to what makes you uncomfortable away from the poker table too. And what makes you scared, excited, anxious, sad. You don't need to be on a mission to change these feelings. You just need to recognize them. You need to get curious. Ask yourself, why did I snap at that guy? What emotion in me was triggered such that I had that reaction? What was that reaction protecting me from feeling? And pay attention to your environments and how you feel in them. Notice that around some types of people, you feel more anxious. Around others, you feel more relaxed. In some physical settings, you feel more relaxed. In others, you feel more tense. Some of these will come easily to you and others might be buried deep. You know, some of your reactions to people and environments will be rational and proportional. And it's when these reactions are disproportionate or irrational that you should really dig in and get curious because that means that something within you happened that doesn't quite make sense. It means that some strong emotion was triggered and you need to get to the bottom of why. We'll get back to poker talk now, don't worry. Just know that if you lost interest in the last part, you are the person that it's most important for. So what can this do for you at the poker table? Introspection leads to self-awareness. Self-awareness leads to empathy. And empathy leads to making better, stronger reads and making more money at the poker table. I've said many times that the biggest edges in poker come from the times that you know what your opponent would do with a certain hand or hand category better than they do. I've felt this multiple times in my career where my opponent is trying to represent a hand that I know they can't have based on the way they played it so far. And that's when you just print money because you can always read them in these situations where their lines are incongruent. But you have to get to that level of understanding of not only emotions in general, but theirs specifically, their emotions, their strategies, their habits. In the context of discomfort, the way that you do that is by first recognizing what makes you uncomfortable and then thinking about what might make them uncomfortable. Now, obviously you can't just simply project and assume everybody is like you because they're not, but you can take what you know about your own discomfort and what you observe in your opponent from showdowns, from the way that they talk, from the types of lines that they take with different hands um, and many other clues. And you can start to guess what makes them uncomfortable. What types of things would they be afraid to do? What types of things would they be excited to do? What types of things do they just not really want to do? Or what lines do they like to take because it feels good? This is where you get to really narrow down their range in many different spots. The way that I would go about doing this, other than the process that I've said so far, is you know, observe them and form a hypothesis and then test it out. You know, a lot of people wait until they have stone cold reads to make big adjustments. And I think for really big adjustments that are way off of the GTO game tree, you should have quite a bit of confidence. But if you're in a spot where you have a bluff catcher and it's kind of close between call and fold, and you have a read that you have, you know, 10% confidence in that they're weaker than normal, just call. That's an opportunity for you to not only push that 10% edge because it's your hands close to neutral anyway, but also to gather more data uh, and support your hypothesis or refute it. Over time, as you keep doing this, you'll build up better and better reads and a better understanding of that opponent's. Fortunately, when you build up a better understanding of one opponent, the process through which that you do that, you learn to read other opponents well too. When your opponent shows down a hand that seems poorly played, ask yourself, do they think that's the right play? Is that an adjustment that they're making to me? Uh, or is there something about that line that based on what I know about them feels easier and more comfortable? The nice thing about developing your self-awareness is that in my experience, the rest kind of comes naturally. And you're already looking at showdowns, you're already interpreting stats and trying to make reads. So this increased awareness just helps you do what you were already doing better. So more focus on emotions and more awareness of your own just helps you interpret this data better. But be careful with this, you might accidentally improve yourself away from the tables too. Hope you enjoyed this. This topic came from my newsletter, which gets sent out free weekly. You can check that out at philgalfon.com. Until next time, take care and good luck.